everyone, I'm back. Today is March 22nd, 2019, and I'm posting this first video in almost two years. Um, I just got out of state prison. I have been in custody in prison for almost two years since August of 2017, unfortunately, and it's been a really uh, hard and mighty road. But it's been one where I've learned a lot, um, and it was horrible, and it was hellish in there, and I was put through so much. Um, Um, but I'm a soldier and I'm back and I want to say this what I learned um, this time and I say this time because uh, again I say unfortunately I've been in prison several times um, but it's not about having been in prison and finding God because that's not what happened I always had God I was always spiritual but this made me realize what I learned, and I learned it on my own. Um, what I learned in there was that I was, my thinking and the road that I took to God was not the right way. Um, and now I've learned the right way. Um, it's not only been hellish in there, but ever since I've gotten out, I, in this very short time, I have been facing so many challenges. There's a very, very uh, high tragedy um, incident that happened to me. Um, it was deliberate, something that was done to me. Um, while I was in prison, it was done out here, and I found out about it, and it devastated me the biggest way this happened in July of 2018 while I was in prison and when I got out I had to face it and deal with it and it's being dealt with legally um, and that's all I can say about it but it was the most devastating thing that happened aside from that I've been facing and am dealing with many difficulties um, and challenges um, another one is parole slash probation. Um, it, uh, it's frustrating because I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. And yet it seems like it's never enough for them. They want more and more and more. And it's, it's frustrating. Um, I have the right to be upset about it. But I'm going to continue to do the right thing and do everything that I'm supposed to do. And nothing I'm not supposed to do. And that's just how it is. Um, another thing is that uh, today, this morning, earlier this morning, I went to court to deal with a um, so-called restitution uh, issue. It, it is an issue. Um, back in, I believe, approximately 2018, while I was still fighting the case in the county jail, the judge assessed um, a an amount of restitution um, when there was no loss to the to the victims and there's one that was not even a victim he was uh, he was and is just a shyster but the judge assessed some money for him to be paid um, in addition to the real victims um, at any rate, uh, there's a clause, a legal clause that dictates that for every day spent in imprisoned in custody um, as a prisoner, there's a certain amount that can be taken off. And I went to court today, um, and the judge, who is a complete and utter asshole, um, denied um, denied me and refused to waive it. But those things happen. What was particularly um, offensive is that while I was sitting in the back row in court by myself, very quietly and calmly, he had one of the sheriff's deputies, um, who I call a goon, who during 2017 and 2018 
manhandled me every time that I was brought to court um, on the sheriff's bus and assaulted me and pushed me around. And this guy, I won't call him a man because he's not a man. This guy who is about, uh, I would say over six feet tall. So he's about six one, six two, I think. Uh, found it justifiable to, you know, physically push me around and mess with me uh, to make himself feel better. And that's, it's pathetic for him. At any rate, uh, fast forward and here we are today. Um, and I was in court quietly, sitting by myself, waiting for my name to be called so that I could go before the judge. And the judge apparently, who is also a coward and, you know, an all-around asshole, um, had contacted him earlier and had him come into the courtroom through the public door and stand right next to me, like right over my head the entire time. And that's how I knew that I was going to be denied because he called this goon to come stand over me. And the goon, the senior deputy whose last name begins with an S as in snake, and the judge, whose last name begins at, with an F, <laughs> um, you know, as in fuck you, um, you know, they, they saw it, you know, fit to do these things. And I was really offended, but I let it go because um, frequently in situations like this, which are uncommon. They want a reaction and I didn't have the reaction that they wanted to give them and I'm glad. At any rate, um, these are public servants and that's how they'll always stay, servants, literally and figuratively. So I left court. I still owe this money. I don't feel that it's right because it's collecting interest every day. It started collecting interest um, upon the uh, sentencing in 2018, um, which is difficult for me to understand, if not impossible, because when you're in jail and in prison and you're not having any income, um, it shouldn't be collecting interest. That's, that's um, an unjustifiable penalty on top of a, another penalty. And all of the other collections, charges, and everything else. So I um, attempted to discuss this with the judge, and he didn't really want to hear it. Um, bottom line is he gave me no resolution, and I still owe that money, according to him, with interest every day. And he was quite rude about it. Okay, but I left it alone, and um, I came back. And I'm dealing with a lot of other things. Um, there are so many challenges out here. There's relationship challenges. There's um, every day uh, getting settled back in, dealing with everything challenges. Um, and I've been, I just got out. So um, these are things that I have to deal with. Um, you know, in our human minds or more aptly in our mortal thinking when we're in a really horrible situation which for me was the hellish situation of being a prisoner um so much was done to me and i went through so much that i thought nothing could be worse than or even as bad as those things at that time that's how we tend to think it's human nature but yet when you when your circumstances change to what is supposed to be an improvement, then you know you get in, you get back into the everyday routine, and then you think, "Oh no, this is so horrible," and you seem to put aside everything that happened in that more horrible situation. As I said, it's human nature; it is what it is. But no, these are real challenges that I'm dealing with on top of everything else that I've been through. But it shows me how how really um, strong I am in every way and how courageous I am that I have been through so much that I've been through in my life. And yet here I am dealing with more things and dealing with them the right way. I'm sure I still make mistakes. 
Um, but I'm hoping to make less mistakes. I'm hoping to eventually not make any more mistakes. Um, what I learned in there on my own, and it was amazing, it was incredible the way that it came to me. Um, um, this approach to God that I mentioned earlier is that it's the reality. Every, you know, and for those who know, then they know what I'm talking about. And for those who don't, I, I'll talk about it more in the future. But right now, today, here and now, what I've got to say is that this is not reality. And this is, and what I say is not some metaphysical bullshit. It's the truth. It's, this is not reality. We, we think it's reality because this is what's tangible. But the truth is that we're... We were created by God in the image of God. And if God is perfect, then we therefore are perfect and our situations are perfect. When they're not and when they are bad and when we are in terrible situations, it's because of things that we... Pers it's, it's the way that we think in our mortal minds. See, mortal minds. And we prescribed it on ourselves. Even prescribed on those around us. And that's why things happen the way they do. Um... And any of you, whether you're facing challenges um, to a slight degree or to a really high degree, um, whatever you're going through, know this, that, that, that these are things that we manifest in our minds. The only evil is also in our minds. We manifest everything. That's where Satan is. Um, there is no entity Satan. It's, it's the way we think. And Jesus understood this and implicitly understood this and put it to work. And that's how Jesus healed instantaneously. Jesus was actually a human being, the son of God, but also a human being. And Jesus even told his followers that everything that I do, you can do. See, we can if we understand. Um, and I'm not there yet. I'm still on this road, on this journey, you know, on this yellow brick road. But if we keep practicing it, then it does become our reality because it becomes easier and easier. And I've been practicing it and, and, and I haven't reached nearly the level that I should. But I'm hoping that I will. And I just want to say that here I am. I'm out and I'm... Um, I'm following my road and I'm hoping that things things get better. Uh, thanks a lot for watching um, and uh, any of you, whatever you're going through, whether it's physical disease, mental disease, loss, um, whatever challenges, whatever problems, whatever troubles that you're going through, just know that everything can be healed and it's and it's not a line of BS, it's the truth. It really can be healed. Just remember that God is always good. God doesn't know bad. God is not a punishing God. Um, God only has abundance and good for us. We just have to do one thing is align our thinking with God and that's when all the good things happen that's when we can find ourselves out of trouble and I'm working on that too thanks a lot see you guys soon